One of the truths about life in the 1980s is that if something was successful and appealed to children, whomever was behind it quickly tried to find a way to make even more money by making something similar. Thus, She-Ra was born out of the success of He-Man. By 1986, the good people at animation studio Rankin Bass decided that their product, Thundercats, needed a brand new something. The result was Silverhawks, which is not exactly a spin-off of Thundercats, but it's basically the Thundercats in outer space. While the two series may not share continuity, they did have similar stories, characters, and even the same freaking voice cast. I don't believe it. Right by Cat's Lair. It's one thing to learn how to fly the Mirage. It's another thing to navigate through space. But while Thundercats ran for multiple seasons and received two revivals, Silverhawks has been largely forgotten over the last three decades. If people remember it at all, it's probably for the incredibly catchy theme song. Tally ho! No, no one? Oh. But can we be real for a second? Can we talk about this partly metal, partly real thing? We know the idea that Silverhawks were basically cyborgs, but isn't the metal just as real as the flesh part? This has really been bugging me for years. Prepare to launch. Release. 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 Now it's time to know your Silverhawks, starting with Quicksilver. N no, not, not that one. We're talking about Captain Jonathan Quick, the field leader of the Silverhawks. Looks like we're going to see some action. Ready to fly, Colonel? Ready as a rooster in a hen house. His last name and his code name were indicative of his superpower, which is speed. On top of his, you know, ability to fly and survive in space. Next up is second in command, Lieutenant Colonel Bluegrass, a literal space cowboy who is the pilot of their ship, the Mirage. Also, for some reason, he got the guitar solo in the show's opening sequence. <laughs> which is actually pretty badass. Very precise. Creditable. The two twin siblings, Steel Heart and Steel Will, were super strong, Touchdown! had a empathetic bond that could be felt when they were even far away from each other, and were also techies. The whole team was rounded out by Copper Kid. And we're not kidding about this, but he's literally from easily the most horrific performance artist planets in the Limbo Galaxy, the planet of the mimes. The Copper Kid, or Kid as they sometimes called him, didn't really speak so much as he communicated through musical tones, whistles, and clicks. He was also used in the show's brief features about space facts. Now this green planet lies beyond Saturn. For four points, Kid, what is its name? Right you are. Because, again, the 1980s, children's shows had to at least pretend to be educational. And then there's Commander Stargazer, the Kojak-looking dude who gave the Silver Hawks their orders from Hawk Haven, the group's orbiting headquarters. He was also, in a way, like the original Silver Hawk, but the tech had greatly advanced by the time he called in reinforcements. Commander Stargazer, the word. We could use some help up here. Now, you may have noticed that the Silver Hawks weren't terribly diverse as cartoon casts go. Eventually, the creators noticed this too and introduced Hotwing, the only Silver Hawk of African descent. His powers were magical illusions, which were powered by mystical energies, and he kind of looked like a black falcon. How'd you do that? Mind over matter, lady. But one of our favorite guest Silver Hawks was the aptly named Flashback who traveled back in time to prevent the team's death. Now, this is a show that took place in the 29th century, where travel between worlds and even other galaxies is possible, and cybernetics have been way advanced. In fact, the Silver Hawks had themselves altered to survive the rigors of space. Even cooler, Still Heart and Still Will had their hearts replaced due to a malfunction when they were getting their advancements. Now, the bad guys. Galactic storms destroy the Silver Hawks. They had some really cool designs, but didn't really have the most imaginative names. They were Yes Man, Hardware, Melodia, Windhammer, Molecular, Buzzsaw, Poker Face, 
and mumbo jumbo, um, among others. They were all part of Monstar's mob and the primary criminal organization in the Limbo Galaxy. Now, let's focus on Monstar because, first of all, this is how you spell his name. Yes, that's Monstar Star. But apparently the first star is silent. Also, he's a pretty blatant ripoff of Mumra, the main villain of the Thundercats. First, here's how you spell that. Both characters are also voiced by Earl Hammond, and they both had elaborate transformations in which they transformed into more powerful versions of themselves. Monstar's extra powers came from the Moonstar of Limbo, and his escape from the Penal Planet 10 was the inciting event of the series. The conflict between the Silver Hawks and Monstar's mob was touched upon in every episode, but it never really went anywhere because it was made back in the days when stories were secondary to the show's primary goal, to sell toys. Silver Hawks, partly metal, partly real, mighty warriors with the powers to protect space from all evil. Most of the primary figures were represented, but the toys also played up the show's concept of weapon birds even though Tally Hawk was the only one who had a significant presence in the series. There were even Silver Hawks comics from Marvel and other merchandise. But with the show canceled before the end of 1986, none of them lasted terribly long. Plus, unlike the Thundercats, the Silver Hawks never really got the chance for a full revival. Although, Monstar had a quick cameo in the Thundercats 2011 series. There were even some rumblings that there could have been more connections between the two series if the Thundercats revival had gotten a second season. Despite a limited DVD release, it's practically a miracle that anyone remembers the Silver Hawks at all. But nostalgia is even more powerful than the Moon Star of Limbo, and all 65 episodes of Silver Hawks are available on both YouTube and Amazon. Silver Hawks, dismiss! Aye, aye, sir! While we may never get a full-fledged revival of Silverhawks, there's still a lot of potential in the Limbo Galaxy and the bizarre characters who live there. Hopefully someday we'll get a chance to revisit those worlds. Mostly, we just want an excuse to sing the theme song again. Silverhawks! What's your favorite Silverhawks memory? And what do you want to see in a Silverhawks revival? Let us know in the comments section below.